They played by the rules. They got the delegates. They, 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 did the, they played the game the way they were supposed to. They get to the GOP convention, and Mitt Romney just changes the rules. And that's why the warning sign is, if they're just going to change the rules just when it's a campaign to suit themselves, how are they going to act if they should become the government? And that's what everybody needs to be thinking about right now. So I know there's a lot of people who still want to play by the rules, and they still want to believe that the system will ultimately work for the people. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. The lesson coming out of this debacle at the GOP convention is the people with the money are just going to say whatever they want to say to keep the money coming to themselves. The Federal Reserve is not going to voluntarily go away. Look how hard they resisted an audit. They're certainly going to resist the expiration of their charter. And my understanding is uh, Congress later amended the charter to make it open-ended. There is no expiration date. This is a permanent Debt slavery, debt servitude. The reason the original banks of the United States had very short charters was to see what's going to happen when we try this experiment. And it was a disaster the first two times. And that's why when they did it for the third time with the Federal Reserve, they said, let's make it a 100-year extension. So those who created the bank didn't have to deal with the possibility it was going to be shut down. They were going to be dead and gone, having lived their lives of wealth and privilege and luxury, and they didn't care what happened to anybody after them. Because these people are smart enough to understand that this whole nonsense about the imaginary playmate in, in the sky and wings and harps after you die, it's just a hoax to keep you obedient and in your place. Yea, verily, though the elites may crap all over you in this lifetime, don't worry, when you go to heaven, things will be really good, and they're all going to go down to the dark regions where devils will poke them with very blunt pitchforks. And it's a hoax. These people knew it was all nonsense. They know they don't have to worry about divine retribution or an afterlife. They want their goodies now at the expense of everybody else. All right, so I want to get back to this thing about the image of America. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bernanke, if you don't mind, would you tell me whether or not you do your own shopping at the grocery store? Yes, I do. Okay, so you're aware of the prices. But, you know, this argument that the prices are going up about 2%, nobody believes it. You know, and the old CPI says prices are going up at 9%. They believe this. If people have fixed incomes, they're really hurting. The middle class is really hurting because their inflation rate is very much higher than the government tries to tell them. And that's why they lose trust in government. But, you know, this whole idea about prices and debasement of currency, if, I, if uh, you loaned me $100 and in two years from now I gave you 90 back, you'd be pretty upset. But we hand back, back money back that's worth 10 or 15 or 20 percent less, and, and, and nobody seems to be able to do anything about it. About it. It's very upsetting. But it's theft. If I don't give you your, ten, your full $100 back, if you've loaned me $100, somebody, I'm stealing $10 from you. So somebody's stealing wealth, and this is very upsetting. But you know, um, last, in January, at one of your press conferences, you said that uh, you sort of poked a little bit of fun at people uh, to downplay the 2 percent inflation rate. But if you say it's 2 and I say it's 9, it's compromised for the sake of argument that it's 5 percent. That uh, you said that if, if it doesn't hurt you unless you're one of those people who stick their money in, in the mattress. But, uh, but where are you going to put it? Are you going to put it in a CD and not make any money at all? So this, this, doesn't, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't encourage the savings, and it just uh, discourages people. But I do want to make a point about prices, because prices go up. That, to me, is not the inflation. It is one of the bad consequences of the inflation, which comes from the increase in the money supply. And that's one of the bad effects. But, you know, uh, you took over the Fed in, in 2006. I have a, a silver ounce here. And this, this ounce of, uh, of silver back in 2006 would buy over four gallons of gasoline. Today, today it'll buy almost 11 gallons of gasoline. That's preservation of value, and that's what, that's what the market has always said should be money. M money comes into effect in a natural way, not in a, an edict, not by fiat, by governments declaring it, it, is, it is money. But uh, why, uh, why is it that we can't consider 
you know, the two of us, an, an option. You love paper money. I think money should be honest, constitutional, still on the books, gold and silver, legal tender. Why don't we use it? But why don't we allow currencies to uh, run parallel? They do around the world. I, my, one of my options, uh, you know, as much as I would like to do something with the Fed, I say the Fed's going to self-destruct eventually anyway when the money, when the money's gone. But why, why wouldn't we legalize competing currencies? Why can't, couldn't people save, put, put this in a mattress and get four or five times much of the value in a few years? So the record of, of, of what you've done in the last six years is destroy the value of real money, uh, of, of paper money. At the same time, real money is preserved. But a competing currency, we ha already have a, a silver eagle. It's legal tender for a dollar. And some people say, well, it's legal tender, it's a dollar, it's on the books, and they use it, and they get into big trouble. The government comes and closes them down, and you can get arrested for that. But what would be wrong with talking about parallel currency and competing currencies? This is something that Hayek talked about, something that I think would be a compromise, and that we could uh, work along those views. Uh, first of all, good to see you again, uh, Congressman <laughs> Paul. Um, just one word on the inflation. Um, of course, those numbers are constructed by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, not by the Fed. They're independently constructed, and I think they're done in a very serious and thoughtful way. Um, on alternative currencies, um, nobody prevents you from holding silver or gold if you want to. It's perfectly legal to do that. And you're also happy to, uh, it's also perfectly fine to um, hold other currencies, uh, euros or yen or whatever else. So in that respect, you can do that, and, and I'd be happy to talk to you about but, but, the But Mr. Chairman, that's not money. I mean, when you pay taxes to buy a coin or you have a capital gains tax, when it's not, if you have to settle a lawsuit, it's always settled in depreciating Federal Reserve notes. It's never settled in, in the real contract. So that's nothing near money uh, when, when it's illegal to use it. But to do it, you'd have to repeal the legal tender laws. You would have to legalize this. You'd have to get over the sales taxes. You'd have to get rid of the capital gains taxes. People, even in Mexico, they're talking about this. They're trying to have competing currencies. They've been wiped out too many times with inflation and wipe out the middle class. They're allowing people to start to save in a silver currency. So uh, I hope we move along in that direction because there shouldn't be any, uh, uh, you know, overwhelming changes all of a sudden that there could be a transition. People could vote on it. Maybe they'll give up on the Federal Reserve note and vote for real money. I'd be very happy to talk to you about it. Thank you very much. Thank you.